than 10 years older. It's the Cold Pizza Podcast. We're going to start there. What's up, everybody? It's Bailey from Horsepower and Pizza. Welcome to another episode of the Cold Pizza Podcast. This is a different one. I did this one via Zoom call with John Kilmer. Quick background on John Kilmer. He is a filmmaker and roommates with the artist formerly known as Mike Studd. He goes by Just Mike now. John does a podcast with Mike and the other guys they live with and hang out with called YNK. You know what I mean? So the YNK stands for You Never Know. It's a general podcast with current events and music. Mike has guests on from time to time, athletes, other artists, entrepreneurs, spiritual gurus, stuff like that. It's one of my favorite podcasts. Kilmer put out on social media that anyone who had a podcast that wanted to have him on, he was more than willing to do that. So I hit him up, he agreed, and we set it up. So if you're watching on YouTube, you get to see that Zoom call. If you're just listening to audio, I appreciate you listening. But unfortunately, because I am so scatterbrained and didn't make notes before I started, there were a few things I wanted to talk about with John and just forgot to bring up. It was very easy to talk to him, like I had known him for years, but then again, I watched their media, and he didn't know me from Adam, really. So, again, huge thanks to John Kilmer for taking the time to sit down with me and do a podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it. Quick advertising segment. Today's show is brought to you by Barnes Brothers Motorcycles and Off-Road, 589 West Pike Street, Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, at Barnes Bros Motorcycles, on Instagram and www.barnesbrosmotorcycles.com. They do Polaris, Kawasaki, KTM, Suzuki, and Yamaha. Parts, gear, service, sales, anything you need, be sure to check them out if you're local to the Pittsburgh area. And even if you're not, I don't even live near Pittsburgh anymore, and I'm willing to travel the three, three and a half hours to go purchase from them because I like to support the local homies and the people who support me. Thank you so much to Barnes Brothers for the support on the KTM Sketchy Cart Build, and let's get into this podcast. (laughs) All right. Put my phone down. So, um, my podcast is called Cold Pizza. My whole um, brand is Horsepower and Pizza. I do mostly YouTube and, like, a little bit of merchandising and stuff on the side. Um, Mm -hmm. Just kind of started the podcast just to get out there, branch out into other things. Um, awesome. Don't really have a topic picked. Um, I put out on Instagram and Snapchat just- today that, hey, Kilmer's coming on. I, there's a lot of Steves that follow me, um, oddly enough. Mm-hmm. Put out, I said, Kilmer's going to be on the podcast. If you have any questions for him, send me stuff. Nobody sent me anything like that you haven't been asked. Haven't been, so, I mean... I can probably come up with some questions if you want to answer questions. All right, I think I'm back. Sorry about that. No, you're good. I hear you now. My uh I think my uh, my Bluetooth got connected to the uh, the car that just pulled into the driveway. <laughs> oh, all right. That's my bad. No, all good. Um, yeah, so, I mean, my podcast is completely anything goes uncensored, kind of like you guys do. I watch YNK mm-hmm. every week, so, I mean, awesome. I know that drill with you guys, and it's just kind of same thing. Do whatever, mm-hmm. say whatever. Um I'm okay. sure porn is going to come up at least once. So <laughs> <laughs> it's never oh. my intention, but it always gets there. No, it's, <laughs> I mean I know how it goes. It is what it is. Um, yeah, it's life, baby. <laughs> yeah, we just kind of we generally do like a. I lived in Pittsburgh the last four years, so um, I'm I moved back home in January. Back home is uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, so I'm like three hours from awesome. Pittsburgh now. But um, man, we we used to do shows in Lancaster all the time. At the Chameleon, I want to say that the Chameleon. I was just gonna say that. I it's insane that I can remember the name of that venue after all these years. That's like the only you venue know? here. <laughs> well, that's where. Uh, uh, is that where like Bam Margera is from, Lancaster? Bam's from Westchester. Bam's like forty-five minutes from here. 
Westchester, right? Yeah. But yeah, dude, I'll, um, I'll never, I'll never forget that venue. I mean, we haven't played there in probably like five, six years, but like, I, I've done at least between Mike and like Huey Mack, I've done at least you know like three or four shows at that place. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if you're into like metal music at all, but August Burns Red. You ever heard of them? I don't know them. Any metal that I've listened to, it's like probably older stuff, like uh, from like maybe the early 2000s, late 90s. But that's okay. Not it. Yeah, because mm-hmm. they're they're actually from. I'm from Mannheim, which is a small town in Lancaster, like 15, 20 minutes outside of Lancaster City, and that's mm-hmm. they're from my hometown. Um, Matt Nagy, who is the coach of the Chicago Bears, is from my hometown, but that's like. That's our claim to fame. We we're good at high school football, and uh, <laughs> fuck yeah. There's there's the largest auto auction in the world, in or the largest auto auction of its kind in the world in our town. But that's about it. Um, that that's crazy. I'm sure my dad's heard of it. He's a uh, he's like a vintage Corvette collector. Okay. Okay. So awesome. Maybe I'm sure he hears about that all the time. That if it's one of the biggest auctions. Oh yeah. Um, no so i mean we're generally i try to keep it like automotive based usually but motorsports anything but i i appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me and uh no we we generally do a guys night type thing and kind of just shoot the shit and chop it up but it's been kind of hard covid i'm not trying to make as few excuses as possible and blame shit on COVID. Um, Excellent. I've been mindset to have. No, I mean, it's uh, your tweet. I think it was like last week, two weeks ago, you tweeted something about the year doesn't suck. It's your mindset that sucks. And I full and well believe in that. Um, There's a lot of people around me that are just kind of, oh well this year's a wash i'm like you got four months left go do something yeah man i i I get it i mean i i tweeted that and it pissed a lot of people off and i understand why i mean i a lot of people are struggling way more than i am through this and like i completely understand that but i still think no matter what bad shit you're going through like you should always treat it as a learning experience no matter how bad it is and you should always just try to see the upside and see how you can you know use that to your advantage because it there is always, you know, a plus side, no matter how bad things get. So I mean, I, I try to urge that for, for everyone to think that way. No, and I mean, I, I really appreciate <clears throat> other people that have a similar mindset to me. Again, I, I'm mm-hmm. not nearly as privy to some of the stuff that you and Mike and Ben and Blue, all, all you guys are where I want to be like five years from now. I mean, I don't have the whole... Mm-hmm musical thing going for me but um i when i sit down and watch the videos that you have produced music videos whatever um Mm -hmm. i appreciate that stuff i'm not to that level i actually just picked up my first gimbal um i'm trying to get more into the cinematic side of things but we do a lot of like Mm -hmm. i say we it's mostly me i film I edit. My friends help me out with car stuff and things in our garage or my parents' garage. We're building various vehicles and stuff right now. But I, horsepower and pizza is me. At the end of the day, it is me. My mm-hmm. friends help out here and there. But the whole filmmaking thing has been something I've been drawn to from a young age. And I'm just trying to learn as much as I can. And I'm all self-taught too. So it's it's, it's a learning experience, but I took this time with quarantine and everything else. I bought a gimbal and I sat down, played with it a little bit. And now I'm waiting mm-hmm. to be able to get out to events and stuff to use it a little bit more. But um, yeah, maybe with, and let, let's back up for a second because that term self-taught is uh, uh, that's changed a lot over the past couple of years. Um, before self-taught mean like it used to mean like you literally had to teach yourself everything now when people say self-taught you can still go on youtube and there's still free access to these tutorials where you don't have to necessarily get a degree or pay money for courses but you can you can access all this information for free and like in a way you're still teaching yourself because you're you know you're taking the initiative 
to, to access that information, but it's never been a better time to pick up a skill because it's, you know, there's just so much information out there and so many people that out there that can teach you how to do things without, you know, you having to spend a dollar. So, I mean, self-taught, I mean, I think everyone should be self-taught in as many things as they can, you know, grasp their, their head around, you know? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, I work in manufacturing. I'm a machinist, CNC programmer, CNC machinist. I have like five different job titles within one job title. Um, but I went, I have a two year degree in that, but I wanted to learn the more like the fabrication side of the business, fabrication, welding, um, and, uh, just kind of more of the business side, quoting jobs, stuff like that. Cause I, my goal long-term is to be self-employed, whether I'm doing video production mm -hmm. work, manufacturing, um, automotive fabrication, whatever I want to work for myself. And mm -hmm. again, it's, I, I moved to Pittsburgh end of 2015, worked at a shop out there. It's the steel city. So it was like the place to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were yeah. other reasons why I ended up out there and, other reasons why I came back, but, um, good experience to get out of my hometown. Um, again, small town, not a whole lot of people leave and mm -hmm. there's a lot of married by 21, 22 <laughs> two, three yep. kids by 25. I just turned 25 and I'm like, I could not imagine having one child, let alone three <laughs> at this age. And <laughs> Yeah. Hey, I talk about, I talked about, I talked about going to my 10 year high school reunion. Uh, you know, and you're what, you're 28 when you go to that. I was single as fuck. And like, I, <laughs> at that time I was on a, I was starring in a reality TV show with, you know, with Mike and the guys at that time, and, you know, people were showing up to the reunion with, you know, again, like you just said, with, you know, their significant others, they're married, they had kids, they had like these jobs they didn't really like. And if anything, that just motivated me more, man. And kudos to you, man. You should be proud for, you know, leaving your hometown to look for more shit to do because most people don't make it that far. No. And I mean, that's when I left, I said I was never coming back. I had the mentality that I was getting out of here when I was like 15, 15 years old. I left when I was 20. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. I left when I was 20. And I said, I'm not coming back. I'm not coming back. I'm never going to come back. And I didn't have to come back. It was my choice to come back. When I came home for Thanksgiving last year, um, I have a couple business connections in the area. And um, they said, hey, why don't you come through and interview just to see what happened? So I went in on Thanksgiving morning and sat down with the guy that's now my boss and the owner of the company at like seven in the morning. I told them what I do, what I'm capable of. I can do this, this, and this. And they're like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll be in touch. And I'm like, okay, like whatever. It was an hour of my time. Thanks for letting me see your facilities and whatever. And I go out to get in my car and the guy that's now my boss, I'm actually really good friends with him. Like we left work today and ended up going to the bar to get pizza and everything. We normally go Thursday nights. I told him I couldn't go tonight. He's like, well, we'll go straight after work. So, um, <laughs> he actually pulled me aside when we got outside. He's like, as far as I'm concerned, you can start in January or whenever really you have a job. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was really cool. And then when they made me like a formal offer, I was like, be kind of dumb not to take it because mm -hmm. the place I was at, I was there four years, learned a lot in the process, but mm -hmm. I, I wanted more. And the place I was at was family owned. There was no like, upward movement for me because I wasn't family but I learned what I could while I was there and now we're on the journey of seeing where I can go with it next but it's been really mm -hmm. helpful because like they let me use the machine shop and the fab shop and everything on my own time I can do whatever I want well that ties into my whole YouTube thing mm -hmm. um, we're actually I have a BMW drift car that I'm building, but then I got a matching, like, you know, the power wheels cars that little kids ride, like the battery powered ones. Yep. Yep. Got a matching BMW that matches my full size drift car. And I'm putting a dirt bike motor in it because <laughs> I don't have anything else to do right now. So, um, 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, dude. That I think that's also. I think that's content people would want to watch because it's fun, it's you know it's creative and it's it's fun and like yeah I'd want to watch that. Let me know when it's done. <laughs> I will. It's, uh, I've been putting out. I've been putting out a video every Thursday. This was the thirtieth Thursday in a row. Oh, so, congratulations, dude. That's awesome. You. I'm. I've been mm -hmm. trying to stay consistent with it and just kind of mm -hmm. run it up as much as I can. I mean, we've picked up. Again, I say we, uh, I got to give credit where it's due because my friends do help out a lot, mm -hmm. but it's been, I forget how many subscribers I had when I moved him. I don't have a huge channel by any means. I'm at like 730 some subscribers as I sit, but mm -hmm. picked up probably a good 250, 300 in the past year or so. And I mean, it's, mm -hmm. It's been a whole learning experience mm -hmm. with trying to figure out mm -hmm. what content gets better views and the, the whole algorithm and everything's so fucked anymore. You never know how mm -hmm. that's going to go, but um, it's definitely opened a lot of doors to a lot of different friendships and like there's people that I have never met that live on the other side of the country that will text mm -hmm. me like they, they're my it's still small enough at this point that there are a couple people that have asked for my cell number that they, they got it and we talk back and forth, but it's getting to the point where that doesn't happen anymore because I don't mm -hmm. need my number out there, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. yep. But the, the fact that there's people that will hit me up and yo, I saw your video last night. And everything looks good. And like, it feels good. And like I try to incorporate like a, motivational piece of information or not piece of information like a motivational piece either at the beginning of the, or the end like how it can all tie back to like real world shit because at the end of the day we are all human and mm -hmm. everybody's going through different shit but the same shit in different ways i guess and that's i don't know there's the whole you guys were talking i watched the this week's episode last night you guys were talking like mike said on the podcast he's like i don't think i want that a-list fame and i mm -hmm. i don't even want like the youtube fame like i see some of these <laughs> the kids that are have millions of subscribers and stuff and they're damn near celebrities if the, you could call them celebrities at that point i guess but mm -hmm. i don't it's not about the attention. It's not about the views or anything. I'm just trying to connect with as many people as I can and just prove that mm -hmm. if you have an idea or a dream, you're more than capable of making it happen. You just have to put your head down and work. Yeah. I mean, your so your YouTube channel is, um, it's, it's based around cars and mechanics. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, you're already doing something different than what, famous you know quote unquote youtubers are doing you know it's like you have a skill set you're only 25 you're uh you know I i'm sure you're great at what you do but at the age of 25 I, I mean you're by no means like you know an expert best of the best yet you know no one is at the age of 25 right. unless you started you know when you were like seven years old which maybe you have i don't know but no. um you know like I, the way i see it is like what you're doing is you're just perfecting your craft it's going to get better and better and the better you get at it, the more valuable you're going to be and the more valuable your knowledge of that subject is going to be. And people eventually are going to catch on more and more and pay more and more attention because you're going to, you're going to be holding valuable information that a lot of people are going to want to know. So I, I just, I say, just keep doing what you're doing, man. I appreciate that. I wasn't <laughs> sure. And is there something that you would tell a 24, 25 year old John Kilmer looking back a couple years like from what you know now is there anything just keep doing what you're doing or is that do you have something else that you would tell yourself when you were younger uh, i'd probably tell myself to wear a condom a couple more times but <laughs> uh no dude I, I i honestly don't have any regrets off like anything i've done i mean i, I i'm gonna be the first one to say it and like i admit it like i i spent my 20s um enjoying myself 
myself and kind of like enjoying the ride rather than focusing on, you know, lucrative financial success, which, um, you know, a lot of people will tell you different things. Uh, you have guys like Gary V. Uh, I don't know if you follow him, but he, I mean, he kind of preaches about how like he sacrificed his entire twenties and he worked through his entire twenties and he sacrificed his twenties. And that's, that's what made him so successful so quickly uh, into his forties. And like, that's not something I was necessarily very interested in. So I don't think I would have done anything differently, you know, looking back at it. Um, but there definitely was a switch. And I don't know if it was like a year, two years, three, four years ago, but like sometime in the last like probably three or four years where like, I, you know, I'm like, you know, I had an incredible time, but I'm, I'm definitely a little more business focused now, you know, and um, I'm starting to focus like a little more about, you know, my financial future, my, you know, my success and, you know, my legacy, wherever it lies and what I like doing. And uh, I think I, I let it happen naturally. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad I did it that way, you know, so I, I definitely don't think I would have changed anything looking back. No, and that's, I like to hear that because there's far too many people that, well, I should have done this and I would have done this and I could have done that. And I don't like the whole should have, would have, could have scenario because that to me that says I don't want to say it says that you're not happy with the way things went but there's definitely uh there's an element of regret to that and um mm -hmm. I don't know I've there's definitely been some shit that's happened the last couple of years that didn't go my way or I guess it went exactly my way it just didn't go the way that I expected it to go is how I look at it and that's mm -hmm. uh there was definitely a period of time where it was, why me, why me, this fucking sucks. I don't, like, I, I played victim in my own head, and then I was, I woke mm -hmm. up one morning, it was probably like a year ago, and I woke up, I was like, nobody's going to do it for me. I don't know what the fuck my issue was that this, mm -hmm. nobody's, nobody else feels sorry for me. Why do I feel sorry for me? And I woke up, and it just, Everything clicked all of a sudden. I liked going to work again, and I liked. Mm -hmm. I don't. It was a weird depression thing. I don't know. Um, super, to all of us, man. Yeah, happens to all super of us. grateful that I'm out of that situation and that scenario. But mm -hmm. it's just there's a lot of. Uh, my mom's got a. I, I'm 25 and I live with my parents again. I never thought I'd say that, but like it happens. And I it's, mean, it's, it's still young, man. It's okay. It's uh, young, I mean, I, it's all right. when I moved out to Pittsburgh, I bought a house and everything. And like, that's mm -hmm. in the process of being sold currently. So that's, uh, but you guys, since I moved, I didn't even really, like I knew who Mike was, I knew who you were and Foley and everybody. I've followed you guys online for a while, but I never really like sat down and listened to the music and the lyrics and everything behind it until like a couple months ago. I don't know. It just came up on YouTube on a playlist or whatever. And if I'm up here working in my office, I'll just throw it on the TV and let it on as background noise. And I forget which song it was like, mm -hmm. I've, I started listening to the lyrics and I was like, Oh, fuck it. I got on iTunes, downloaded the whole album, downloaded like three different albums that night and just had everything on repeat for a while. So that's when I started watching the podcast and everything else. And the, uh, sorry, I lost my thought there. Oh no, it's okay. <laughs> um, when I started watching the podcast, you guys, I can, I feel like you guys are some of the most relatable people. Like, I don't know, especially here. You're from the Northeast too, right? Yep. Boston. Yeah. Okay. Boston. Um, I don't know. The Northeast is so much different from LA and like, big, I feel time, like, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like part of it has to do with the fact that I'm also from the Northeast that, I can relate to you guys a little bit more, but the fact that you guys went to Hollywood and you're like, fuck it, we're still doing, the, like you guys didn't change. And I mean, mm -hmm. I didn't know you before then, but you guys are not the typical Hollywood, like douchebag persona <laughs> bullshit. Thank you. Like <laughs> I think of when I think of LA. So. Great compliment, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it was kind of roundabout, but it got there. <laughs> um, but it's definitely a, it's really, I feel like I can relate to you guys more than like Rogan. Like I sit down and listen to Rogan and it's like, I don't know. He's kind of, he's the top dog when it comes to podcasts, but he has access to people that nobody else really has access to. And like, yeah. you guys, you guys just keep it so relaxed and like you sit on the couch and I was watching a clip, like I found the Instagram clip of the podcast that was up yesterday where Mike's just sitting in the studio shirtless with the fucking straw hat on. <laughs> My mom's like, what the fuck are you watching? I was like, no, this is the podcast I want. I was like, he's probably high as shit right now. And it's just normal. It's, it's so down to earth and so relatable. And I'm like, I don't know. It just makes it easier to watch and easier to, I don't know. I'm, I'm definitely on like a whole different, I don't know. I, it's all started with, because of YNK. I started meditating and start, I'm on like my own spiritual journey now. And it's like, it's That's kind good, of man. cool. Like, um, That's good. No, and what you just what you just said is exactly like I, I don't think we did it intentionally, but it kind of ended up being that where you know we looked up to people. I mean, not past tense, even currently, we looked up to people like Joe Rogan, and like he's probably the reason we wanted to do a podcast in the first place because we loved watching uh, just the guests he had on, and like we think he has like a really good mindset. And um, if anything, like he's like the best news you can look at now, you know, like you look at all like the media and the news, like he's the people, I mean, like he's like the podcast I go on to like see what's going on in the world because, you know, with everything that's going on, like that's like the most factual shit. But what you said is like, you know, it's they're at the end of the day, they're like, they're older dudes. And, you know, I, I think there's less relatability when people in their twenties are watching people in their fifties talk about shit and talk about life. Cause there's always going to be that gap, you know, right. whereas you have, you know, you have people you know, kind of our age and, you know, by no means do we act like we have all the answers, you know, uh, but you know, no, and that's what I like about it. Cause it's, it's yeah. just raw. It's, there's no bullshit. And like, you guys are, will blatantly step up and say, well, I mean, I, this is how I see this. I can't confirm that that's how it actually is. And there's, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like the whole podcast platform for you guys, for Rogan, for everything else, because it's, it's no bullshit. It's. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it, man. And like, it's again, like we're, we're kids that came from, you know, you know, we started, you know, with, not much you know we started with no fans and we kind of built something that but it you know we didn't build something overnight we've been doing it for 10 years now you know roughly and you know it's in a way we've had experience that i think people can value our story and like you know what we went through and where our head's at now and you know how we live our life and again it's you know we don't have all the answers but i think it, there's some value to it in sharing you know our our mindset and how we're thinking about, about certain things you know no, I, I definitely it's it's cool to me that like the ranch is just kind of this whole like I liked how the Stevenson ranch was a different thing and you guys just kind of went and branded that as its own thing um, <laughs> yeah. uh, like I, I mentioned that my house is in the process of being listed and sold currently um, mm -hmm. have some plans for picking up some potential land and building a uh i don't know what we're gonna call it yet because we we like the the uh name fuckery factory but <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that the seo is that good on that one i think you should shorten it and just call it the fuck factory that sounds a little fuck smoother factory. <laughs> that might work it's, it's, it's nothing better than inviting a girl back to the fuck factory you know what i mean fuck it there's probably more money on pornhub than youtube anyway oh god yeah that's great man is there anything better like as a man than just like buying your own land and then like building something on it i mean i can't <laughs> confirm yet because i haven't done it but it's definitely i don't think, any, I don't think anything will feel better than that ever no I, I think it's definitely it's very appealing to me and um yeah i don't know i got plans i I grew up on Jackass and Nitro Circus and everything. And with Bam growing up, 
Bam and Ryan Dunn are from 45 minutes away. So I grew up on that shit and it was like local. I think my parents yeah. were happy I didn't end up on Jackass. <laughs> that was when I was like 12 years old. That was what I wanted to do for a living. It's what everyone wanted to do. That's why I got into filmmaking probably. I think when I first got my camera when I was, you know, 13 years old, first thing I did, make Jackass videos with my friends, you know, and I'm right. sure I wasn't alone with that. But That was exactly probably, how I got into it. <laughs> I like, you know, I, I probably never connected the dots, but they may be the reason why I wanted to film stuff in the first place because it was fun, you know? You're just with your friends and you're fucking around and you're doing dumb shit and it was fun, you know, so... You know, and I ended up making a career out of it, believe it or not. So, like, <laughs> kudos to them, man. Like, those guys are the fucking shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nothing's better yeah. than getting paid for something that you actually like to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And doing it with your friends. Like, it's a yeah. blast, dude. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I mean, it sounds like you have a, a good mindset and you're on the right path. And, you know, I, I guess, like, Another piece of advice and a lot of young people get caught up in it is like, you know, thinking too far into the future, like, you know, you can get wrapped up in, you know, your YouTube channel, for instance, being like, oh, like, I only have this many followers and like, I wish I had this many and like, I got to do this to get more followers. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get wrapped up in, in that too much, you know, as long as you're doing what you love and you have pride in what you do and, you know, you have the persistence to keep doing it. Uh, the rest will follow, man. Like the opportunities will follow. No, I appreciate that. I actually, I tweeted last night, I said, don't let day to day, let you take your, how did I word it? Something like, don't let the day to day distract you from the bigger picture and vice versa. So if you're too mm -hmm. on the bigger picture, you lose sight of what you're doing day mm -hmm. to get there. Mm -hmm. and I think, I think you hit the nail on the head. You just shortened it and put it in. Yeah, I mean, that's you know that's one of my that's one of Mike's fav, uh, famous quotes is don't lose your per don't lose your don't lose your pursuit of ha no don't, don't lose your happiness on the pursuit for more I think that's the quote you know uh, and it's just you know living in the moment and enjoying you know being in the moment and my my dad had a you know a nice a nice quote not too long ago where he told me that you know the thing that ended up making him successful didn't even exist until he was 40 years old you know it didn't exist in the world until he was 40 years old so like you know i at the, i think everything does like lead to something bigger but you kind of can't really force it or predict it you just kind of have to you know do what you know feels right and what gives you purpose and and you know just do your best at working hard at it and you know getting better every day that's it you know right and i definitely think Unfortunately, social media has kind of been the uh, downfall of a lot of that for a lot of people because yeah. Instagram's a highlight reel. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can use example after example, but you have all these young girls that are image obsessed, for lack of better term. Mm -hmm. they're, yep. They need to be the prettiest, the thinnest, the, they need to have mm -hmm. long tan legs, they need... And that's just not the case. That's you're looking yeah. at models on Instagram and yeah, they're, they're wearing all this designer stuff and Louis bags, Gucci belt, whatever. And like, that's cool, but that's all materialistic shit. Mm -hmm. You don't see that they're struggling to make rent payments, et cetera, because they're out mm -hmm. here trying to flex. And I mean, that's, Oh, you, you can, you, you could put that, you know, even beyond, you know, even beyond Instagram models, like you can, you can put it on people like wealthy people or, you know, whatever people who are posting, you know, like, like these like fancy trips or these nice cars or whatever, like, yeah, you see the materialistic things and like, you know, the success, I guess, from a financial standpoint, but you don't know, like, if they're happy, you know, like, there's no way that your Instagram will measure your happiness. Yeah. And uh, I mean, so sometimes it does, but it's not the norm, that's for sure. So, yeah, uh, I, you know, it's, you know, you were right, though, like, people are in a constant state of comparing themselves to other people, and that creates self doubt. And it's best not to get wrapped up in that, man, because it's, it's a slippery slope. No, and there's there's another picture out there of Jeff Bezos in his garage office in like yeah the 90s, and it says don't compare your chapter one to somebody else's chapter 20 or chapter 25 or whatever, because like yeah, obviously exactly. 
Mm -hmm. And that's, I don't know, that's a big thing that I struggled with for a long time. Um, Don't really see Mm -hmm. give a shit about it at this point. I think it's that whole, like, I'm telling you, meditation changed my life. Mm -hmm. Manifestation is a real thing. I know you guys all believe in it, but anybody else that's out there listening, it is more powerful. Your mind is more powerful than Mm -hmm. you allow yourself to believe. But, um, it's definitely, it's a journey and it's balancing all of it and kind of finding yourself and where you want to be and what you want to do is all part of it. But I think, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fairly decent at what I do. I feel, I don't know. I'm sure there's somebody better than me. I'm sure there's a million people better than me, but Mm -hmm. I'm not focused on them. I'm focused on me and stepping up what I do, scaling what I do Mm -hmm. so I can be one of the best. And that's, I, I think the whole comparison thing is where a lot of people start to fall short and. And it's, uh, and it's being impatient because like we're, we're in a society now or, and you see it in in younger people, um, you know, maybe people your age or or younger where there's so much impatience because like, like we have access to stuff so quickly now, just in general, like we can get everything so quickly now. Um, and then people get wrapped up in, you know, seeing success that way, which not the case, you know, like there's, of course there are like overnight success stories, but it's not the norm. And that's not, you know, it's not how things really are, you know? And, um, there's a, there's a book that Mike put me on too, that I read about a year ago called Think and Grow Rich. And it's, if you haven't read it, I strongly suggest you read it. And it's an old book. It's from, you know, it's probably almost a hundred years old, but, um, man, a lot of good values in there. And, uh, I also started reading Malcolm Gladwell, which is a fantastic author. And he ta- he has a few books that talks about stuff like this. Uh, he has a rule called the 10,000 hour rule where, you know, you, you're technically not an expert at something unless you spend 10,000 hours on it. And, um, if you, that's, in, if you really add it up it's like that's spending hours a day every day for like 10 years you know right. so like if you're in your mid-20s it's like well, I'm probably not you know at my 10,000 hours yet so like if you know I can't really consider myself an expert and I can't really like beat myself up over not you know seeing a massive amount of success over this one thing that I haven't put my 10,000 hours into yet so um you know if you have a niche and you have like an interest like man you got to give it time you know like I guarantee like five years from now you keep doing what you're doing putting the time in like you're, you're going to be unstoppable and you're, you know, you're going to attract so many like different awesome opportunities um, because you're going to be that good at what you do. But, and I know it sounds like a, a lot five years from now, like, Oh my God, I can't think about that. But I, that's, that's just how it goes, man. That's how it is. You know? And if, but if you can consider yourself an expert at something when you're like in your thirties, like 31, 32, you get the whole fucking rest of your life, man, to figure out how to monetize that. You know, <laughs> like you're an right. expert at that thing. Like you're the fucking man at that thing. So like, you just got to be patient, man. You got to work hard and be patient. I appreciate that. No, it's, uh, and you're a hundred percent right. There's, I mean, I got, I'm starting, I'm at that point now at 25, you're starting to see everybody split off in their own direction. Like mm-hmm. I have friends that are, I'm single as fuck. I have friends that are <laughs> single as fuck, which is hard to believe, but like, mm-hmm. I have friends with absolutely no game. I have friends that are, out there crushing it well not right now because of covid but i have friends <laughs> yeah. that were out there crushing it four or five nights a week like they're 21 22 <laughs> in college yeah. i have friends that have been married for six years like mm-hmm. it's just i don't know i went to trade school or i have an associate's degree from a trade school and uh mm-hmm. like I did that whole thing. My whole degree cost me like four grand out of pocket. So like Mm -hmm. that was a drop in the bucket. But then I have friends that just graduated with their masters and they're a hundred grand in debt and they have jobs that they don't even Mm -hmm. like. And I'm like, man, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm not trying to compare where I'm at, but like where I'm at Mm -hmm. mentally, I'm just so glad that I'm not, in a position like that because i don't know that i'd be able to handle that i know no dude i i totally feel you i actually i uh i made my first movie kind of based around 
exactly what you're talking about, you know, and it's people kind of get wrapped up in what they see around themselves. And if you never leave your small town, then you, you see everyone doing this. You see everyone, you know, oh, I have to go to college. I have to work hard. Uh, I have to, you know, get maybe a master's degree. I have to get this awesome job, whether I hate it or not, just so I can make money, just so I can pay back that loan, you know, just so I can get married at this age. And like, maybe I won't be happy married at this age or later. You know, I mean, you get, get caught up in all this shit because that's what you see around you in your environment. Um, we had this awesome entrepreneur on our podcast, David Meltzer. Have you seen that episode? I started following him on Instagram because of the podcast. Man is brilliant. Fantastic guy to follow. He has this thing that he talks about a lot where he says, you know, show me your five closest friends and I'll show you your future. And man, I can't, I can't like <laughs> preach that enough. It's like, it really does come down to your environment and like how, like what you surround yourself with because then that's how you're going to be wired and that's how you're going to think. So if you stay in that small town and you see people doing all these things, like, you know, it's going to make you want to do those things and you're going to fall into the same trap. So you just got to be damn sure what you want and you have to surround yourself with like-minded people, man, because that's, that's going to be the direction that you head. Right on. Is that mm -hmm. the movie you were talking about? Is that the one that you have that you're working on currently, or is that one that you previously? No. I'm working on my second one now. The first one I I, I started uh, writing it in 2007, and then I uh, I shot it in 2008, and then I finished it in 2009. It was a very long process, but <laughs> it it, uh, it essentially just kind of preaches that message, and I, I kind of wanted to make. I mean, on the surface, it's you know it's about a group of guys who live together that want to get fucked up and bang bitches and shit and like that's relatable of course but the deeper message is you know when, when you leave college or whatever when you're young and you're in your early 20s it's it's okay to not know what you want to do it's okay to be confused it's okay to you know have a sense of like you know what the fuck am I doing um that's that feeling is okay you know it's like you shouldn't you shouldn't let that you shouldn't like you shouldn't let that create fear in yourself to like make you do things that you don't want to do or is not right for you you know it's it's just uh because a lot of people fall into that trap man and it's it's okay if you you know are lost for like quote unquote lost for a little while and you just try new things uh because i mean that's such an important age man like your early 20s and to like your mid 20s like you it's such an important age to try new things and to like see what you're passionate about you know and if you get caught up in like these lock holds of society where you know you start doing things that other people are doing that maybe isn't really right for you, you're not going to get the chance to find what, what those passions are. So uh, I, I try to preach that message as much as possible. Right on. Do you want to talk about the movie that you're working on? Or is that kind of all under wraps at this point? I don't know. No, no, no. So I'm a, I, I used, I use COVID kind of as like the catalyst to get off my ass and to work on the next one. And and um, I'm about to put my last movie on, on Amazon so people can just enjoy it for free whenever they want. Uh, last, this, around this time last year, I, you know, I, I shot out a message on social media and I was like, hey, my movie's done. Whoever wants to see it, you know, hit me up and I'll send you the private link. And it turns out like, you know, over a thousand kids end up hitting me up and I, I end up sending it to, you know, a thousand plus people. And yeah, I got a very good response and people caught on to the message and like, I, I love that people could connect with it and it was, it was a great experience. Uh, and now slash like fundraising phase right now, and I did a Kickstarter for a few months and I raised, you know, uh, twenty thirty thousand dollars to make the movie, which is like not a lot, but it was enough to, you know, make something which I'm, you know, super proud of. And this time around, I, I didn't really want to do a Kickstarter because uh, I hate asking people for money. It's just something I don't really enjoy doing. So I did something a little more unique this time around where I, um, I'm, I wanted to use music streaming revenue as a way to uh, fundraise my movies. Because whenever you stream something on, say, Spotify or Apple Music, that artist gets you know, a very small payout, like a penny or like a half a penny every time you stream one of their songs. So I came up with an idea, my partner and I, I came up with an idea to make sleep therapy albums that are similar to like the Calm app where you can okay. loop these albums, you can loop these albums while you sleep. Uh, and they're like nature sounds or like these frequencies that are good for like calming and relaxing. And, uh, and you know, every night you loop these albums and listen to them while you sleep, it donates money to our film. And uh, it's, it's kind of an out of the box idea. And uh, it's, you know, it's a little more exciting than, you know, just putting your hand out and saying, Hey, can I have some money for my movie? So 
uh, that's something we've been doing for like the past month and it's uh, it's been kind of like a fun little journey you know and we're gonna spend probably the next at least nine months doing it nine months to a year toss before it out we can there and plug it like what do people need to search toss it out and plug it i don't have a huge following but <laughs> no dude even if it's just you it's it'd be it'd be uh it'd be amazing it's it's called the snoozers okay. that's the art we're we're uh <laughs> we uh we're called the snoozers. You can go to badboysasleep.com and you can get the link to whatever platform that you use. And uh, we have three albums out right now and it's, it's pretty simple. You just, uh, you know, you go to an album that you like, uh, you loop it when you sleep and uh, every night you do it, it donates like about a dollar to our movie, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you do it every night and you do it for a while. It actually starts to add up. And that's kind of our goal is to get people hooked on them and to uh, get people sleeping to like these therapy albums when they go to bed because they're actually very relaxing and it's uh, something that a lot of people are starting to do now to so listen to these like you know just calm noises when they sleep because it actually does help it helps you fall asleep super quickly yeah i started listening to like uh guided meditation type thing mm -hmm. like, a couple months ago i started doing that like as i fall asleep and it's like an mm -hmm. eight hour 10 hour long thing and it's supposed yeah because your subconscious picks up on all that i've definitely helped at it or I've definitely found that it helps me sleep and I definitely, mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like that's kind of helped this whole getting into the meditation and everything mm -hmm. too. But um, no, I'll definitely yeah. check out the snoozers and uh, the snoozers, yeah. <laughs> what's the website again? Badboysofsleep.com. All right. I'll find it. <laughs> I'll post yeah. it down on socials and everything. See if I can uh, you out I a little bit. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. And you know, oh, yeah. anyone who anyone who uses stuff like that or uses the Calm app, I just you know ask to switch over to my stuff because it's very similar and it would it'd be going towards a really good cause. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, what what's the new movie about? Um, it's called Day Drinkers, and it's kind of like the same same element in the sense that on the surface it's something you know relatable to probably more guys, but you know it's it's a it's about like three friends who were like in their early thirties and you know, like they're pretty blue collar and they got families and shit. And once, once a month they go out to this cabin in the woods and they just get like as fucked up as possible. And like, they just, you know, they keep their friendship alive and they kind of get away from like their, you know, their normal lives to just kind of get fucked up and you know, whatever. Um, but uh, I wanted to make the story about something that's based on true events so these fictional characters kind of go through like this story that actually happened in real life. And uh, I, I was very interested when I was coming up with this idea. I was fascinated with like cults around America over like the past 50 years. So I did some research and I found this cult that actually was from Massachusetts, pretty close to where I'm from. And it's uh, it was a satanic cult because sat Satanism in the early uh, 80s was like very prevalent. There was a lot of satanic cults popping up and it, it started to become like a nationwide thing. So there was a cult that was based around like this prostitution ring where like the pimp of the prostitutes was like the satanic leader and he was brainwashing all of his prostitutes into being satanists and he like ended up sacrificing a few of them and like killing them in these woods. Um, in Massachusetts, and now they're, these woods are known as like the most haunted woods in America, like in real life. Okay. So I was like, so I was like, all right, like how do I make these like three like drunk idiots that I created to get wrapped up in like this satanic cult story? So I, I'm making a story about how like during one of their like drinking expeditions, one of their wives gets captured by the satanic cult, and they're going to sacrifice her, like do a satanic offering and sacrifice her. So they have to like find find her and, and save her and uh it's it's kind of like the wackiest most bizarre thing ever but it's i really wanted to do a um, suspense thriller and i wanted to make it like a little funny uh just because I, I always have this comedy side to me so um and i'm always fascinated about stories where, where it's you know fictional characters changing the course of like uh real events like tarantino does it all the time and i i've just always loved that in his movies so i'm kind of doing something similar um and kind of and I just having some fun with it. So that's, that's where I'm at right now. No, that's cool. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm definitely going to have to watch that one when it's done. That's, uh, I know it's a long <laughs> process and you're. Oh, yeah. We're going to shoot it next year because uh, okay. you, know, you can't even film anything now. With everything going on, you can't film. You won't be able to film anything until next year anyway. So, uh, but yeah, man, it's, 
it's uh, filmmaking is something you know I've always wanted to do, and I'm just trying to get off my ass and do it. You know. Right. I forgot to mention. You're gonna love this. When I moved home, like I'm home seven months now. I moved home like mid January. Mm -hmm. I have a dog named Murph. He is going to be 13 in October. Mm -hmm. We started calling him Steve a couple months ago just for shits and giggles. <laughs> and my dad is fucking pissed because he does not respond to Murphy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> he only refers, he only responds to Steve. Well, I have one of the Steve Sports Bar cups. The, my name is Bailey, but my friends call me Steve. So I went yeah. to the For the Homies website and I screen grabbed that. And I have a vinyl cutter, so I made him a sticker for his food bowl that says, hi, my name is, and we wrote Murphy in silver Sharpie, but my friends call me Steve. My, he was up at the cabin with my parents a couple weeks ago. My dad was yelling for him and yelling for him. And he's going deaf, kind of. But my dad's yelling for him and couldn't get his attention. And he goes, Steve! And he turned around as soon as my dad yelled, Steve. Yeah! <laughs> no, it's we got another name. one. It's a funny name for, for a dog, man. It's just too good. I can't even imagine calling our dog anything other than Steve. It wouldn't make sense. No. <laughs> He's such a Steve. <laughs> yeah. It's fantastic. Have you ever seen Post's um, Velociraptor, the big ass truck with the I, I, I've seen pictures of it. I haven't seen like in person. I haven't seen it in person. The, the guys have, but I've seen pictures as well. It looks pretty fucking deadly. Um, <laughs> well, potential video opportunity for, uh, well, for you or for anyone who wants to get involved. The next Power Wheels that I am building with mm -hmm. the bike motor in it is going to be a Raptor, but I need to stretch it to put a seat in it. So I'm going to make a Velociraptor. Mm -hmm. and by the time I'm done with it, I might just try to hit Posty up and send it to him because I'm running out of room to put shit. But <laughs> it could be a pretty cool photo op or video or something. I don't... We just started planning this one like two days ago. So I don't even have like a render or anything to show. <laughs> hey, you never know, but it sounds fucking fascinating and I can't wait to see what you do with it. <laughs> we'll see, man. <laughs> I love it, man. Is that a big market? Like, are, are a lot of people doing that? Like, doing these creative, like, automotive projects? There's – automotive YouTube is fairly large. Um, there's – like anything else, the – there's a lot of channels that have millions of subscribers, and then there's mm – -hmm. I don't know. I, a lot of the channels with a lot of subscribers seem to be a lot more um, – look how much money I spent – as opposed mm. to look what I can do with my hands and my knowledge, which there's a market for it, obviously, but I don't have 300 grand to just go out <laughs> buy Ferraris and Lamborghinis and shit like that. So I yeah. build shit for fun. Like awesome. Dude. It's, it's titled horsepower and pizza. My BMW drift car was actually a COVID project. I wanted a drift car for like the last three years and was like, I don't want to spend the money for it because it's, I've never drifted. I've been to drift events. I have friends that are into it. So that's why I wanted to get into it. And I was like, I don't want to spend even three grand on something that I'm going to drive like a couple times a year. Yeah. There's better ways to allocate those funds. Yep. So when I moved home, I moved home January, COVID hits like March, like a week into COVID, my buddy calls me. He's like, Hey, um, my friend from college has a BMW drift car project. It runs and drives. He'll sell it to you for 350 bucks. <laughs> like, well, shit, I can't really argue with that. Well, we go up to pick this car up with a trailer and everything. Yeah. His dad owns a pizza shop. So it, it fell into my lap because it's my whole thing's called horsepower and pizza. Just because I was into cars and ate a shitload of pizza in college, I just <laughs> took that in and ran with it. But yeah. he's like, yeah, my dad owns a pizza shop. Because I guess he wanted $500 for the car. And then my friend told him, he's like, my friend that owns horsepower and pizza wants it. He's like, $350, come get it. So we go to get it. They gave us pizza and everything. I just ended up mm -hmm. with 
I haven't announced it on any of my stuff yet, but I ended up with another free car that I plan on driving across the country. Mm -hmm. We're just doing weird shit and having the time of our lives for the next now until whenever somebody tells me that I can't have the time of my life anymore. And I'm <laughs> that day coming, so. Your future wife. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole. Dude, that's great though, man. I, I fucking, I, lo I love it, man. But that's just, that, that's what I'm talking about though. Like, I know it doesn't seem huge, but like that, those little things that you attract, it's because of like who you are and what you're doing. And like the bigger you get at who, like what you're doing, the more of that shit gets attracted to you. You know what I mean? So like, it's just going to keep happening and it's going to keep getting bigger. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, like I said, it's not about the views or anything. I'm, I told somebody the other week on a podcast that I'd be making these videos regardless of if I was posting them. There were so many hundreds of videos that I've made in the last 10, 12 years that never saw the light of day on YouTube or anywhere else just because this is what I'm into and this is what I've done. And it's more so for me to look back and be like, oh yeah, remember when we did that? And like, here's the whole process. Like, it's kind of cool. Like my mom did a bunch of scrapbooking and stuff when I was growing up. This is like the 21st century scrapbook to me. So true, man. I mean, that's, that's what essentially we've been doing doing too. I mean, I'm so grateful that I've gotten to like videotape all of our memories because, you know, I can, like, we can look back, you know, from seven, eight years ago and been like, what do we do in this city on this date? And I like, I have it. I have all the footage. We have edits of it and we can like, we, and it's, and I totally agree with you, man. Like, even if we didn't put that on the internet, like I'm grateful to have it because I can look even like 10 years from now, if I look back at it, it's going to be fucking incredible. You know, it's right. it, it, like a wonderful memories. It's incredible. Mm hmm. Well, I don't want to tie up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, come on and speak with me. But I have one more question for you before we go. Let's do it. Does pineapple belong on pizza? Fuck no. Absolutely not. Zero percent chance. Are you a pro pineapple guy? I am. I'm oh, Christ. I'm what? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make, I'm Italian and that doesn't make any fucking sense. Pineapple on pizza. Unbelievable. <laughs> I can't, I, pineapple. Well, I don't know just, exactly which clip is getting pulled and used for <laughs> fucking Instagram this week. <laughs> Pineapples and tomato sauce. Oh my God. It makes me want to vomit just talking about it. Ew. I mean, the ham is the saving grace. You know what I mean? Yeah. The ham is the saving grace on the pot. But like, even so. Like, like, a, there's like a hot cheese, hot cheese and pineapple. Like who, would, who would ever be like, oh yeah, that's, that's the, that's the ticket right there. That's what I want. Pineapple and hot I cheese. I didn't lead with that because this call would have been over probably an hour. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think any differently of you. I just like, I have, I have been so against pineapple I mean, and pizza. It's not my go-to, but like, I'll eat it if it's there. I, mm. I like, I can't eat. If I was starving, I would pick all the pineapples off. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I don't know, man. I don't have a, I don't have an ounce of Italian blood in my body. So maybe that's the difference. I uh, and I love pizza. Maybe not as much as you, but I love pizza too, man. And I I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I'm not even like like I'm not even like the uh, the snobby Italian guy who like has to have like the best of it. I'm not snobby by any means when it comes to food. I just can't do that. It's just can't. It's, it's not good to me. I get it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I asked though that your response was that was about spot on for somebody that doesn't agree with that but okay well I feel like that's like the most split down the middle in this fucking country is like pineapple or no pineapple on the pizza you know it goes like literally 50 50 each way yeah. don't you agree I, <laughs> I forget what the results were I ran it as a poll on Instagram one time and I know the it was pretty well split I don't, I can't remember what the final result was, but it was pretty close. Yeah, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that, you know, there's that many people that like it, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's incredible. I mean, it's incredible. it definitely is a weird, I, I didn't even really have it until a couple of years ago. Yeah. I was like, nah, I mean, I'll try it. And I, I don't know. It's. <laughs> to me, it's like the show, The Big Bang Theory. I see commercials for that show and I'm like, who? Who the fuck watches this show? And then it's like uh -huh. winning all these awards. <laughs> yeah, it's winning all these awards, and it's had like a million seasons. And I'm like, fuck, I guess there's like a ton of people watching the Big 
Thing theory. I, I can't even understand who the fuck would watch the show. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, Kilmer, I appreciate your time and uh, coming on the Cold Pizza Podcast. Of wish course, man. Yeah, anytime. Wish you guys nothing but the best. Um, you have this is an open door policy. If you ever choose to come back on, that's completely up to you. You're more than welcome to come back anytime. Um, My door's always open. Anytime. Yeah. Well, um, I'll be in touch when I finish up that little Power Wheels thing. And uh, yeah, keep me posted on your projects, man. I'd love to see them. I will, man. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you guys nothing but the best, and I uh, just stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully uh, we'll see you. Whether or not we ever get to, you guys ever get to tour again, <laughs> I'm not sure, but hopefully we'll see you soon. I hope so, dude. I'm I'm counting down the days until we can get on the road again. I hear you. All right, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Of course, brother. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks for having me on. Later, buddy. See you.